Hi guys, today I'm going to take a look at how to do speech to text or speech transcription in the browser. And there's kind of two ways to do this. One is just to use the native APIs available in the browser. So most browsers will either come with a, an API for doing that and it'll have its own model or it'll just use the one that's built into whatever operating system that you're using and it'll just leverage that API. But you can also bring your own model if you want to, to do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to look at both and look at the results of both. And they both actually work really well for this purpose. So it just gives you another mode of input. So let's do the demos of both and then we'll look at the code for both. So let's take a look at these two examples. I have both of them up here. One of them is just using the built-in browser uh, way of doing speech to text. And I'm going to hit start transcription. It should start transcribing stuff and then writing it back up into that text box above. So let's see what it does. Um, and it's, if you see, if I take a breath, it, it will take what I'm saying and then put it up in there, the final. So if I'm going to use this for input, there is one thing I would highlight about it and that it that is that it doesn't really do punctuation or anything like that. So everything just appears as the words I'm saying without trying to parse the sentences. And that could be good or bad, depending on what you're trying to do. So if I wanted to turn this into some kind of transcription or prose, I would probably have to do some kind of post processing on it by taking it through maybe another kind of model, maybe a Gen AI, Gen AI model that would then take the raw words and then try to put punctuation and commas and other things into the text to make it more readable. So let's turn this off and then go look at the speech to text for Whisper and see how well it works. So this one is going to use Whisper and because this one isn't really using real time, it's going to basically just record a file. And I'm so I'm going to be speaking to the microphone, record a file, and then it's going to encode that file and then send it into the model because the model can understand certain kinds of files like AUG files or WAV files, and then it can parse that as a waveform and then do the tr text transcription that way. So let's hit start recording and I'm going to speak to this and hit stop recording. So it's more of a manual process rather than an automatic one. I could probably make it automatic if I tried hard, but I'm not trying real hard. I'm just going to use a manual start and stop. So let's just start recording this and see what it does. And we'll see if it adds the punctuations and other things like that to the output. And if it does, it'll just show you some of the differences between maybe something from like OpenAI Whisper and what we got straight out of the browser. And it's transcribing it now. And this one did add the punctuation. Uh, you can see that. And let's see if it adds the output. And you can see that it does that kind of stuff with this particular output. So Whisper is an open AI model and it's fairly robust. And I think it works really well for giving you a kind of parsed text that has punctuation and stuff like that. While the real time transcription is just going to give you words and it's not going to add any punctuation and stuff like that. So both have their uses. I'm not saying one's good or bad. I just think that these are just different modes of putting in text to the browser using speech rather than having to type it all out. So I'm going to show you the code here. Uh, I have the audio transcription in real time that I'm going to look at first. And then the, of course, the one that used the manual controls. Now the real time one, of course, would be useful for things like commanding the uh, app to use your voice. So if you want to have a voice control in your app, this would be a great way to do that. Turn left, turn right, move forward, move back, go up, go down. Those kinds of commands you could use to uh, create a, a audio interface for controlling something in real time without having to actually have manual interventions there. So it's a great use case for that. In any case, this one is very easy to wire up. There's no external dependencies. Basically just check to see if the speech recognition SDK is there. If it is, great. And then you can then uh, check it. If it's there, then you can start to do the loop that we saw where we had the continuous uh, polling for input. So I would speak and then take a break and then it would then start over and then it would continually add new a transcription to that final transcript as I would speak and then pause. And then after a pause, it would then break and then add something to the, the final transcript as well. So very easy to do here. Nothing, nothing real complex, very easy to use. Uh, I didn't really have to spend a lot of time trying to figure this out, but the audio two, which is the one where we'd had the more verbose uh, output, which is going to have punctuation and other kinds of things like that. 
uh, required the more manual input. And this one would be more for a dictation style application where I want to dictate to the machine and have it basically transcribe what I'm dictating. So if I was building a transcript for a video, for instance, this one might be work better if I was using a, a command interface for uh, doing something like having voice input to control things, the other one might be better. In any case, this one's pretty straightforward. To, it's using external dependencies though. It's using transformers.js uh, and it's gonna wire up a you know, transformers.js right there. It's gonna have some wired up controls right here. It loads the model up. It's, it's using Whisper Tiny. Um, Whisper Tiny is one of several versions of Whisper. Whisper uh, Tiny is a small one, and th there's like some medium uh, sized ones and some large ones. Now, the smaller ones will work for quick uh, and quick and dirty, I might call it that. But if you want to have more refined input or multiple language support or that kind of thing, you'll need to use a larger model. Larger models need more memory and they also need more compute. So that's the trade off. But Tiny uh, will work for English and it will work for smaller context. And the results aren't nearly as refined, but generally speaking, it works great. I've used it for a number of different kinds of applications, and this is just kind of demoing it in a browser. So once you wire all that up, you just have an event listener right here that's going to listen for the event. And then what it's doing is it's basically getting audio chunks, uh, just data that's byte data, and then adding it to an array right here. And then from there, it's taking that array and then building a blob from it. And this is a browser blob. And that's just wave data. It's just audio encoded data using the wave format. And then uh, that will then get a URL for that blob because the model is expecting a URL. And then I will give it to the model itself to process. And then the, the model will then process the raw audio data, transcribe it, and then write the uh, transcription out right here. And then kind of resets everything down here uh, after that. So all that to say is it's very easy to use, just like the other one. Uh, this one doesn't require hardly any code at all. Uh, everything, including HTML and all that stuff, is about 100 lines of code. So it doesn't require a lot of fuss to do. Now, of course, with this, you can also do this server side if you want to use one of those larger models too. But doing it right in the browser uh, gives you another way to do transcription and that kind of thing. Or you can do, again, like the audio interface. Both of these will work. Just pick one that's going to be most appropriate for your application and you will have AI enabled uh, voice in your application as just another mode of input. And then you could use different kinds of text processing on the output from one of these models if you wanted to. And we're going to look at different kinds of text processing uh, in other videos where you can take text data and do different things with it, uh, specifically around like Gen AI and, and classifications and that kind of stuff. So let's... Uh, call this one a day and thanks for watching. And of course this uh, link to the code will be in the video description down below and hope to see you on future videos. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at the one mule. And as always, thanks for watching.